Hey guys, this is Gigi. I wanted to make a series of videos uh, having to do with um, what you guys remember. Uh, in some of my videos, I always would put a uh, link to the Star Wars episode where they would, uh, the aliens came down, right? And then uh, they were going to take away the humans. And they had a book, it was called To Serve Man. But nobody knew what the inner pages said. But then finally, when the man gets into the ship, uh, one of the, his friends goes and warns him, no, no, the book, it's a cookbook. Mr. Chambers, don't get on that ship. The rest of the book, to serve men, it, it's a cookbook. No, no. The reason I say that is because the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, what they have accused you, the apostate, they accuse you of, if you ever leave the Jehovah's Witness religion, you are mentally diseased, especially if you're an apostate. Now, part of that is true. If you're an ex-Jehovah's Witness, you have to have the courage to believe that you are mentally diseased. And this is why I say this, because you when, and I, when we were going to the meetings, they would always tell us that the governing body provide spiritual food, and they would use the Matthew 24, 45 text about the faithful and discreet slave. But that's not really the case. Because you see, I am a faithful and discreet slave. And the verse keeps talking about a second slave. And the, that slave was an evil slave. And that's what Watchtower is. You and I know that now that we know the truth about the truth. A faithful slave says, hey, here's the truth about the truth. Here's the truth. Go, go. You don't become my follower. Don't follow me. You don't need me. Go live your life. But an evil slave acts differently. And an evil slave wants to own you and control you and eat you like in that, in that Twilight Zone episode. The point is, is that we were being fed spiritual food from a very evil slave. And we know the history of Watchtower and, the, and, their, and we know their literature and, and all the, the, demon possess, uh, the demon pictures in there. And we know their teachings. And, it, and, it, and we say, you know what? They were telling you the truth, but they didn't tell you the other side of the coin. Watchtower was giving you spiritual food. It was just tainted. But when you watch uh, videos from ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, the majority of them, the great, 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 great majority of them is the exact opposite food. It's saying, hey, here's the truth. Here's the evidence. Now go, go, go on your way. Don't You don't have to subscribe to me. You don't have to be my follower. You don't have to be my friend on Facebook. No, 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 go, go live your life. That's what freedom is all about. That's how you know a person is a real faithful, and it's not a slave, it's a steward. A person who's a good steward of Jesus says, hey, Jesus gave me freedom. I might as well give you freedom. But a bad steward, a bad steward takes the knowledge, hides a lot of the information, and uses that knowledge to what? To empower themselves over other people. Like Jesus talked about in that very same Bible text that you and I as a Jehovah's Witnesses would always hear. That the faithful and discreet slave what, is supposed to feed you. But they did, and they poisoned you. So when Watchtower says that, hey, you have a, uh, you're an apostate and you have a, uh, you're, you're mentally diseased. Well, of course you, they're telling you the truth because they were the ones that were cooking the food. They were the ones that were, you know, writing the materials. And they knew that the information was bogus. They knew the information was tainted. Now, what do you do? Well, you go through detox, right? You watch Jehovah's Witness videos, you learn the truth about the truth, and you go through a detox motion. But here's the thing, and this is one of the reasons why I want to do these videos is because, um, and I, I'll probably do it in the next one, but basically I want to talk about how, like, you know when you go to Alcoholics Anonymous and you say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and, -so, and then I'm an alcoholic. Well, they're onto something, and um, uh, it has to do with laying the matter bare before the congregation, openly confessing your sins. And so basically it would be like me saying, Hi, my name is Gilbert Gonzalez. I am a recovering idolater. You see, you realize that you have problems. You realize that, yes, you were being fed for 10, 20, 30 years, 40 years. You were being fed very bad information from a really dangerous cult. 
and you come to gri- grips with reality and you realize that, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm a very bad person. I, I, I'm an idolater. I understand it. I want to talk about that later in a different video. But then um, you, a lot of you also understand um, that quote that I always say uh, of Yoda and Star Wars, uh, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. There's a lot of suffering going on in the Jehovah's Witness world. Those that are in and out. And why? Because you're angry. Because you're hateful. Now, I, I've talked about this before. It's like, well, I don't feel hateful. Yes, you don't feel hateful. And yes, you don't feel angry. But that's part of the food that they give you. Where you can't see that you're hateful. You can't see that you're angry. But going back to the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, uh, point, if you accept the fact that you've been poisoned, if you accept the fact that it says, you know what, I am an angry person. And I know where it comes from. I am a hateful person and I know when it comes from. And you know what? I pray to God and I tell him all the time, Father, I'm a very angry person. Father, I'm a very hateful person. I know it. And I, and I, I pray to God and I say, Father, I, I'm an idolater. I know I'm an, I was an idolater. But I, I always repeat the things that I know are true, even though it hurts, <clears throat> because that way you never go back. Now, one of the things that we're going to talk about today just has, has to do with narcissism. I'm going to show you this video link. And, and watch the, the show on this on, on Lisa's uh, page. It's a great show. It, it, you know, it's these these are two doctors talking to each other. So there's a lot of heavy information there. And then you can also look up Sam's uh, <coughs> uh, web page, and and the guy just nails it out of the park about nar- narcissism. It's narcissistic mm. because what is the paranoid? What's the main message of the paranoid? The main message of a paranoid is I'm sufficiently important. To be the victim of a conspiracy. The CIA is after me. The FBI is after me. My neighbors are after me. My boss hates me. Why? Because I'm important. I'm the center of attention. I'm the mover and the shaker. That's why everyone envies me. That's why everyone hates me. This is paranoia. So we're beginning to reconceive a paranoid personality disorder as a form of grandiosity. And so it has an interface with narcissism. But you see, Jehovah's Witnesses, when you were going to the meetings, or are you ex-Jehovah's Witnesses? You were being spiritually fed by a group of very evil men. And they trained you to be narcissistic. They trained you to be selfish and narcissistic. So you leave the Jehovah's Witness Church and you say, well, I'm not narcissistic. Well, you see, the remnants of that food are still within you. And all I'm saying is you have to learn to recognize it. And when you recognize that, hey, maybe I am narcissistic. Maybe I am an angry person. Maybe I am a hateful person. Uh, maybe I am a worshiper of men, a follower of human beings. Where does this come from? And you have to learn to live in reality. And that's what Watchtower didn't uh, teach you on purpose. And also in that video in the very beginning, it talk, you know, he also talks about uh, uh, how... how Narcissists don't live in reality. So I encourage you to go uh, to that video and watch it. It's an hour long. but And so you, and Jehovah's Witnesses don't realize that when they're being told, you know, Russia's after you, right? The world is after you. You know, the, the world is after Jehovah's people. No, the world really doesn't give, care about you. You know, uh, the world is happy that uh, you're not going door to door. The world is happy that you're leaving, you know, you're out of the picture. But... The damage, the damage that it causes on an individual level um, of narcissism uh, is great. And it also has residual effect. So you're not just narcissist when it comes to your belief, uh, in your religious beliefs, but it also has extra effects in your personal relationships with your family and your friends. And now you know why, now you understand why. Jehovah's Witnesses have destroyed marriages, destroyed families, destroyed friendships. How many times on YouTube do you see people that have destroyed friendships? Every person that they become friends with, they ended up destroying it. Why? We, now, we're not using it as a criticism for those of you who are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who are on YouTube and you want to pretend to be friendly, but everybody you befriend hates you within you know you, you can you can bet money that two three four weeks or a month you're going to be in some kind of fight with that individual whether on facebook whether on youtube or so forth and what it is is um and i don't say it as criticism what i'm saying is that you have to come to reality that this is learned behavior 
The Jehovah's Witness religion taught you to be a narcissist. And they taught you, uh, and basically uh, they set you up for failure. You're, that's why you can't keep a, a wife or that's why you can't keep a husband. That's why you can't keep friends. That's why you don't talk to any of your immediate family and then your extended family. Because see, this is you, you're, you're a narcissist. That's one, one aspect. And there's a lot of other ones uh, that we're going to discuss in, in, in the future videos. But it goes back to living in reality, living in realville. And, um, and I hope this uh, video clip helps you. And I hope this video clip encourages you to go watch that video. It's an hour long. But again, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation between two doctors and, uh, who are experts in their field. In, in psychiatry so uh, uh, my I want to talk later on in the, few, in, in the other videos how we need to detox and, and basically the best way if you leave the Jehovah's Witness uh, religion is to openly openly admit your faults and openly admit your errors because you're gonna see um, a lot of you a lot of you ex Jehovah's Witnesses are very angry people and you don't even believe it you don't even know it but when you when you tell yourself, you know what, I'm angry or I'm hateful, you know, it helps. And then you start realizing, you know, I'm, I'm babbling again, but it, uh, you, you realize where it came from. And then it makes it easier for you to uh, make the proper changes. So I'm not criticizing you if you can't, you know, if you're on YouTube and you're an extra Jehovah's Witness and you're an angry person. I'm not criticizing you if you're a hateful person. I'm not criticizing you. What I'm trying to tell you is, hey, you were set up for failure. You were set up for failure. And uh, and you need to live in Realville. And the best advice I can give you as an ex-Jehovah's Witness, whether you're a longtime ex-Jehovah's Witness or a uh, recent uh, ex-Jehovah's Witness, is openly admit to, to God, to Jesus, or to your, and especially to yourself or, or, or your family, your loved ones, openly admit your, your, your errors. Openly admit them uh, and embrace them. So that way you, you, you can learn from them and also learn how to never repeat uh, and go back into becoming, an, like I was, an idolater and worshiper of men. I was an idolater. Uh, 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 and I see a lot of extra Jehovah's Witnesses and they're still idolaters. They're still worshiping other human beings. So that was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me when I left the Jehovah's Witness religion, you know, is... I had to come to Jesus moment. I was like, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an idolater. So uh, that's it. And I hope to make another video uh, and we can do a series of them and we can talk about all the different uh, poisons that Watchtower has uh, regularly infected us with their, quote, spiritual food, unquote. Okay, that's all. <laughs>